The Drive starts now. Got a lot of stuff to get to here. Have some Kings numbers for you. Uh, Fort Ant Territory still going. 7:15. Uh, we'll talk about Antonio Brown news from yesterday. Uh, I I do want to get to. There's a couple stories we normally wouldn't talk about. One involving a mountain lion, which we'll move to the eight o'clock hour, uh, and another involving Maya Moore, the WNBA sitting out the upcoming season. You're thinking, Dave, what are you doing talking about that? I think that's a fascinating story to spend a few minutes on. I agree. And to try to find, I don't know if there's an equivalent to it. And I don't know that there needs to be, but I want to get into the reasoning behind it. There's not an equivalent to what she's doing, I don't think, at least not of a player of her stature. Sure. Because Maya Moore is... is One of the best players in the WNBA, period. Yeah, it may, maybe ever. Like she's Right, like, and she's, she's sitting a, out this year to focus on her family and on her ministry. Right. That is what she said in the Players' Tribune. And I think that's what Glenn Coffey, the former 49ers running back, did. Sure. But he was like a backup. Yep. He was a – and I think in his first or second year when he did that. So not not quite the same. The only thing I think you can compare to it is Michael Jordan's uh, break from basketball. Right. I, that's exactly that what was run. in my head. That's the only modern-day player-for-player comparison I can think of. But what I want to get into is without doubt – without – Without casting aspersions at the truth and ethics of what Maya is doing and her true feelings towards what Uh she wants to do, I think it's a fair question to ask, if Maya Moore was making $15 million a year, would she still be doing the same thing? And does that factor in? Does that make this story different? Or is this just an example of an athlete at the top of their game, male, female, WNBA, NBA, saying, I'm taking a year off to focus on family and on on God mm-hmm. and, and things that are very important to her? I, I think it's interesting enough to spend a few minutes on, and we'll do that uh, in the 805. Kyle, can I give you uh, Can I give you some – I spent a lot of time yesterday. I, I, Kyle and I were texting yesterday afternoon. I had a moment where – uh, about two hours where I had weirdly nothing to do yesterday afternoon. My my wife had gotten off work early and was picking up the kids and doing their activities. I had something cancel on me. So I had like two hours at home. I had nothing to do. So I sat around and looked up stats and I recorded LeVar Ball, uh, the LeVar Ball sound off of Phoenix. Um, I recorded uh, Kobe Bryant's interview, which turns out, by the way, are all Always cut up in, there. Yeah. in our audio. So that was a uh, 45 minutes wasted. No, it was well spent. I have some numbers for you. Please. Regarding your Sacramento Kings. Which, by the way, the uh, the text line, there there are, is a growing cacophony of people out there that are inviting you into the Kings family, asking if you are ready to renounce your Warriors fandom and come on board. I'm going to pass on that. I do appreciate the overtures, though. It just greatly benefits me and my job mm-hmm. for the Kings to do well. Yes. And I think for me... But you also like them. You like yeah, the Kings. Yeah, they're, they're, they're a lot of fun. Well, I like the Kings right up until like the Warriors have to play them right. in a series that matters. We may have to... Uh, I don't know if you'd have to take that week off. L- like literally... That might that might have to happen. Yeah, yeah, it might. I, we'll have to figure out how you might, or at least, at least you may have to like like Damian could handle that on the lowdown. He could handle you being a Warrior fan. I don't know in that environment. I don't think I would I don't be think, fair to you. And I don't think we would have any productive conversation. None. <laughs> it would be a lot of middle fingers, oh, which you can't see sure. on the radio, but you right. can see on the uh, telecast. K-H-K. Brought to you by uh, Sac Republic and. Jiffy Lube at KHDK.com. Kyle, the, speaking of uh, your hated Warriors, the last time the Sacramento Kings lost at home was January 5th to the Warriors. I believe that was a four- or five-point loss. They have 10 losses this year at home. They have lost to Utah and the Warriors at home twice, Denver, Toronto, the Lakers, the Clippers, Portland, and Oklahoma City. That is one, two, three. Four, currently five, six, seven of eight are playoff teams right now. Mm -hmm. The only team they lost to at home that was not in the playoffs is the Lakers. They have not lost to an East team at home this year. That's incorrect. What East team did they lose to at home? Toronto. 
I'm sorry, because I literally just read off that they lost to Toronto. Uh -huh. I literally read that off 30 seconds ago. <laughs> and then I said, because I don't know if you know this, Kyle, but Toronto is now in the West. Oh, is that yeah. part of the Clippers yeah. Sixers trade? Way to sound smart, Kyle. <laughs> Idiot. They are 13 and 6 versus the East. And going into tonight, Kyle, the Sacramento Kings have played the fifth toughest schedule in the NBA. And guess what? That's going to rise after tonight, after they play the Houston Rockets. They will, after tonight, the Kings will have played either the fourth or third toughest schedule in the NBA. But right now, it's the fifth toughest. They are five and one in three point games, including a loss in overtime. And they are 18 and four versus teams below 500. Their four losses to the Wolves, the Pelicans, the Memphis Grizzlies, and the Phoenix Suns, all on the road. They have not lost to a team below 500 at home. In the last seven games, final note for you, I thought this was really cool. And that Pelicans loss, also, it's really worth noting, was like beginning of the year when the Pelicans I, were. I think it was the second yeah. game of the yeah. season. They got blown out. They lost to Utah at home, I think 127-123 to open the year, which was actually <laughs> with what happened. You may remember the preseason game at home against Utah the week before where they just got played off the floor. I think Utah was up at one point like 27-4 to at Golden 1 Center. That, that, that loss to Utah at home to open the season was actually a, a bright spot at the time. In the last seven games, Kyle, the Sacramento Kings have had five different leading scores. Buddy Heald and Marvin Bagley were the only scorers that led the team twice in that stretch. They've had a different leading score in almost every single game over the last seven. And two of those were by their 19-year-old rookie, Marvin Bagley. There's a lot of really cool stuff in there. The Kings are beating the teams they should almost always. Almost in every scenario, they're beating a team they should beat. They've snuck in some stinkers like the loss in Phoenix. They've blown some leads at home. But even those leads they blew at home, with the exception of the Lakers game, that those are the playoff teams. Mm -hmm. You know, like Portland, Denver. So the drive question of the day, Kyle, is are the Sacramento Kings officially in a playoff race yet? And when I voted, it was overwhelming. <laughs> very much overwhelming. I Actually, I haven't even – I'm saying that, but – I have not even checked that. Uh, yeah, I would imagine Kings fans. When I voted, the percentages were 88 to 12 in favor of yes. Uh, 398 votes in 20 minutes. Wow, and we get it. A lot of people vote in your poll. Thank you. you know. And 89% uh, say the Kings are in a playoff race right now. And what we mean by that is, of course, technically they're in a playoff race. They're a game out. But do you feel like they're in a playoff race? Oh, I... I with the amount of Kings fans, most notably Kings Twitter MVP John, live tweeting the yes. end of Clippers Hornets last night. Right. Like people were locked in sure. to teams that weren't the Kings for the first time since, what, 06? Uh, like, yeah. what other teams do matters, and that means you're in a playoff race. Can I do this, Kyle? Can I spend, no. can I spend a couple minutes being that guy? Hmm. I need to be that guy for a couple minutes. You have minutes. two minutes to be that guy. Are the Warriors going to make the playoffs? Yes. Nuggets? Yep. Thunder? Mm, yes. Thunder are currently 34 and 19, three and a yeah, half yeah. after I, the I had to. Okay. Yeah. Blazers? Uh huh. Rockets? Mm hmm. Spurs? Yeah. Spurs are currently 32 and 23, yeah. six and a half back. Yeah, the Spurs are. Utah Jazz? Yes. Pro yeah. You Are you fairly confident? I'm fairly confident. Okay, so that's seven teams that we've got mm -hmm. kind of locked in. Uh, we can't predict injuries, guys. Uh, that, that's, no, but that that's fine. So the Clippers just unloaded their best player because, yes, I'm did. sorry, 2020 and 2021 draft picks aren't... aren't they're not playing this They're year. at least not starting this year. Right. They might get some bench minutes. There you but, go. So those draft picks aren't helping them this year. The Clippers should effectively be done. I agree with you. Should be. Should be. Although Doc Rivers has done a really good job this year. And and Landry Shamit's a good player. Wilson Chandler can contribute. Whatever. Let's, for the sake of argument, say the Clippers are done. That opens up the eighth spot, of which the Kings are currently a game out, and they're currently one and a half games ahead of the Lakers. 
the Lakers, who just lost by 46 to the Pacers. With LeBron James playing 30 they minutes. Because they very publicly yes. wanted to trade everyone. So here's... here's so who's And who's behind the Lakers? Uh, okay, Timberwolves are currently uh, three games behind Sacramento. Are you scared of the Timberwolves? I am not. Okay. I'm not scared of the Timberwolves. Anybody behind the Kings that you're like, that's a team that could catch them. No, uh, if the Pelicans... If this Anthony Davis stuff wasn't going on, I would be a little bit afraid of them because I, I obviously but Anthony Davis, Davis is, is healthy and not even playing. Right. <laughs> well, but that's because of what's going on right now. If Davis was playing, Drew Holiday, I like uh, Julius Randle. If, if I just he, don't think I don't think Davis is going to play the rest. No, of No, I time. agree with you. I'm not scared of the Mavericks, the Grizzlies, or the Suns. Grizzlies are probably about to trade uh, Marcus Gasol to Charlotte. It looks like. So here's the Kings fan in me, though. It's all it's all right there, man. For sake of argument, the Clippers are out of it. They're going to be out of it. The Lakers are a game and a half behind the Kings. They just got trashed by a Vic Oladipo-less Pacers team in Indiana by 46 last night with LeBron playing 30 minutes. Kyle, let's go to Vegas, you and I. Let's pack our pockets full of money from a benefactor. You're going to put that money on the Kings getting into the playoffs over the Lakers? Yes. I'm not. I absolutely am. And let me be very clear here. This is not Dave Shtick where he's being Mr. Right, right, right. This is not Shtick at all. We'll talk about this later. I have a real, real hard time buying LeBron James missing the playoffs. It's not LeBron James. I understand. Watch that team. Dude? I did. And I have a real hard time believing that this roster is going to be the same roster that goes into the playoffs. Whether they make a trade the next day or they do something else, I don't know what. You okay. really think there's a world in which a healthy Le- – and we, we're not talking injuries – where a healthy LeBron James, after going to eight straight finals – Is he healthy? He's back. He played 30. He played 40-plus minutes in an overtime game. Mm-hmm. Where LeBron, Raymond James, is going to miss the playoffs – Okay. Because the Kings are better than the Lakers. I do think the Kings are better than the Lakers. Okay. But I don't think, I think LeBron James muddies that up a little bit because he's LeBron James. Eh, he's not Darren Fox. <laughs> <laughs> Four down territory next. Antonio Brown, uh, we found out, was in some trouble back in January. Sean McVay explains Todd Gurley's semi absence. Do we buy it? And uh, should the NFL have a third-place game? Don't answer now. We'll talk next. Sports 1140 KHDK. Four down territory. Brought to you by Fire Wings. 21 different flavors to choose from. Firewings.com. Just wing it. Oh. 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 Okay, let me move some things around. Maybe maybe 8.35. Okay. Okay. First down, Kyle. You don't have to move it around right now. Uh, first down. Turns out Antonio Brown was involved in a January domestic dispute. Uh, will this affect his trade market? I, I, I want to start off by acknowledging that this is kind of an insensitive question, and I wrote the question. I, I want to get that right out of the way. We're talking about a domestic dispute, and, of course, the thoughts are with the alleged victim, what happened that's bigger than football. I, I want to acknowledge that, but because we don't have details and because it at least appears on the surface, we, we don't, we're not going to speculate that this is something that – it's basically already been handled. The, the Steelers were aware of this. We got to think the NFL was aware of this. So we're assuming this is a minor situation. We're not talking about something like we've heard in the past with other players. I, I do think it's a fair question. If you're a team like the 49ers, if you're a team, whomever might be looking at Antonio Brown, do you take a, another pause at the fact that you've got a 31-year-old guy with a pretty hefty contract uh, who also happens to be one of the, if not the best receiver in the NFL. I don't think so. I don't think this affects it. I think it's certainly something you do due diligence on. I think it's something you talk to the cops, you talk to the Steelers, you talk to the NFL. It's certainly going to extend those talks. But in the end, I don't think if the offer was X, Y, and Z for Antonio Brown, it's now going to be X and Y and you take Z off the table. I think it affects his trade market in the teams that will be willing to do business with the Steelers here because there were already some red flags, obviously, with the way he's exiting Pittsburgh. 
But a team like the 49ers, who just got done with the whole Reuben Foster um, situation, mm-hmm. I think the 49ers, it would not surprise me if they just opted to not pursue this at all now. So you're saying just it may even, not af- even just the optics of it. It may not affect whether or not he gets traded, but it may reduce the teams that are in the market. Yes, yes. I absolutely think that's. The I, case. I think that's fair. And, and maybe the Niners, and maybe in your X Y Z scenario, maybe the Niners were going to say, "Hey, we'll give you a twenty, uh, we'll give you a twenty twenty first and our and our uh, and a pick swap in the fifth this year or whatever." And now they go, "Hey, you know what?" We'll do a fourth rounder this year. See, I agree and disagree with you. I think in the Niners, I think the point you make is solid, but I don't think it would affect the Niners' deal. I think, I think if anything, to your point, it would take a deal completely off the table because maybe yeah. the Niners go, well, we're not going to, tr- we're not going tr- right. to tr- change the value. But w- in the wake of Reuben Foster, mm-hmm. in the wake of Alden Smith, we, we, this is bad optics. Right, that's yep. going to overrule anything. Second down. Hey. Second down. Sean McVay says, opportunities not plan. Limited Todd Gurley in the Super Bowl. Do you believe him? Okay, I'm going to yield my time because we're late here and because I know you have a lot of thoughts on this. So I'm going to yield my time to you. I wrote this with you in mind, Kyle. Thanks, do, you, do you believe when Sean McVay says that? No, because no. Todd Gurley should be getting, like, he needs to get 20 carries. You made him the top paid running back in the league for a reason. He's the focal point of your offense. You need to ride or die with him, and they didn't give him the chance to take over that game. They didn't give him a chance to be effective, and and that is an inexcusable move if he is, in fact, fully healthy. And if he's not, then the Rams have some explaining to do because he was not on any kind of injury report. You got some explaining to do. Third down. Third down. Should the NFL have a third place game? This isn't as crazy as it sounds. This happens in other professional sports worldwide. This is something that is not unprecedented. Here's the deal. You have to make it worthwhile for players to do that. You have to make it worthwhile in the collective bargaining agreement. That means money. There has to be an incentive for some guy to play in this third place game and tear his knee and lose his career. Football is a different ball game, no pun intended. You have to have major financial incentives. That being said... The idea of the Saints and Chiefs playing in the bye week between the championship games and the Super Bowl and the fact that you have an entire new source of revenue, you have a neutral site like the Super Bowl, you come up with a cutesy little minor league name there, all the advertising, the ticket prices, the concessions, I'm pretty sure you could work out a deal where every single player that participates in this game is getting real money out of that whole deal and you, you, you weight it based on winner and loser. As a fan, I would love that. I would have loved to have seen the Chiefs and Saints the week before the Super Bowl. I don't think you could incentivize that nearly enough for the players to come back after they just lost a shot at the Super Bowl to, hey, play in this consolation game. Play in the That's consolation tough. game. Get a trophy. It's tough. Fourth down. Fourth down. Fourth down. Classic you wanting everybody to get a trophy. Uh, 20 years from now, what will be the number one memory from this year's Super Bowl? I'm not being cagey here. I think that highly depends on what Tom Brady and Bill Belichick do because I think if this was their last one, then the, then the memory right. will be this is this is what put the cap on their legacy, yada, yada, yada. I think if they win another Super Bowl down the road, that's a whole different story. I, I think we will remember this for two things. Number one, the Patriots adding to their dynasty. But most importantly, I think when people recall this Super Bowl, it will be recalled as – one of the most boring Super Bowls in modern day memory. Mm-hmm. Like what? Like when I when I ask you about the Broncos Seahawks Super Bowl, which was boring for a different reason. What what's what memory? What's the first memory that pops into your head? Broncos Seahawks Super Bowl. The, Kyle. Sa- the safety, like the, that. I remember a safety and a Bobby Wagner pick six. That's okay. all I got for you. Sure. Now was there a signature play from the Bobby Wagner pick six? From no, from the Patriots and, and Rams. Is there a, is there a play you remember? Probably more? the Stephon Gilmore interception. Sure. Just because it encapsulated that game so perfectly. Julian Edelman winning MVP. Yeah, like at some point we're gonna go. Oh yeah, that Patriots. Right? You're gonna remember it because it was so low scoring. Yeah. All right, we'll take a break. Uh, when we come back, let's get. Uh, I want to. I want to expand on the the Clippers and Lakers, and how that sets up your Sacramento Kings. Uh, if we have time, we'll get to John Wall. 
Maya Moore. That story is in there uh, as well. And uh, did De'Aaron Fox, could De'Aaron Fox have been a Nick? And could Chris Stapp's Porzingis have been a Sacramento King? Uh, there are reports out there, and something we alluded to the day after the trade, Kyle, if you remember correctly. We'll explain what that is next on The Drive. Sports 1140 KHDK. This is Kyle Madsen with your top stories on Sports 1140. Well, a Los Angeles basketball team made a trade last night, but maybe not the one you're thinking of. ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski reported that the Clippers agreed to send Tobias Harris, Boban Marjanovic, and Mike Scott to Philadelphia for a hallway. Mike Scott? Uh, yeah. Oh, done with Thunder Mifflin? Yeah, he uh, is. Okay. He is. Yeah. So many good bits in here. There really are. Uh, they'll also receive the the Clippers, well, a 2020 first rounder, and then Miami's unprotected 2021 first, along with a pair of second rounders that could be very helpful for the Kings, who are a game back of the Clippers for a playoff spot. Speaking of the Kings, they're back in action tonight against Austin Rivers and the Houston Rockets at the Golden One Center. The Kings are looking for their eighth consecutive home win. Pre-game begins with game night at 530. Kings live is at 630. Tip-off with the G-Man is set for 7 o'clock. Uh, also, the Lakers made a minor trade yesterday. They sent rookie Svee Mikhailik in a second-round pick to the Pistons for Reggie Bullock. It's 7.34. Time to get that perfect Valentine's Day gift at Sharif Jewelers. Spend $99 or more and receive a pearl bracelet at Sharif Jewelers. Those are your top stories. Now back to The Drive on Sports 1140 KHTK. KHTK, you're home with the Kings, Kyle. I don't like it when you forget that. I refuse to play the rejoiner until oh, okay. we acknowledge until, okay. that. Okay, when do you want – do you want me to say it now? Uh, I'd like for you to say it right now, okay, and I will those, give you some those, Okay, thank you. Those are your top stories. Mm-hmm. Now back to The Drive on Sports 1140 KHTK, your home of the – What's The good. Drive <laughs> on Sports 1140 KHTK? True story. You know, when uh, KHTK switched over, it became KHTK many, many years ago, the HTK uh, was for Hot Talk. No, it's for Home of the Kings. It was for Hot Talk no? because they had all kinds of talk shows coming in. They'd switched off. This used to be a music station. And then and then when they made the deal with the Kings, it was serendipitous that HTK then could turn into home of the Kings. That's why KHTK became call letters way back in the day. No, you know that or not, Kyle. It's a true story. Look it up. It's probably nowhere you can look up. But I'm imagining Hot Talk being a radio station of just different, like, Hey, here's where it's warm outside. Hey, have you guys tried these new hot sauces? Hey, look at look at Adam Levine with his shirt off. <laughs> like hot. Yeah. I, I can't believe I got down in the mud with you, dude. <laughs> hot talk. Yeah, they had like Imus in the morning. Hot talk it's. Papa Joe Chevalier, I think, was on here. I believe the late Papa Joe Chevalier. I could be wrong there. Hot Tockets. Okay, so, Hot hey, tockets. Kyle. <clears throat> Hot Tockets. I love people, too. My my question about... It's like the Hot Pocket. A third-place game. And would that be okay? Hot talk. My favorite part was the response of... From, like, several people who were... Uh, free, let's just have participation ribbons. <laughs> a third-place game? Heck No. <laughs> I think I think the only reason that's really coming up in this situation is is that the Super Bowl was so boring. No, I'm with you, but as a football fan, you t- forget about everything else. As a football fan, you're telling me you wouldn't enjoy from now on instead of having the open week where they play the stupid Pro Bowl. You, okay, the, here's, the open here's week, as a as a as a Forty Nine er fan. Yeah when they lost the NFC Championship game to the Seahawks or the Giants, watching them play the next week it would have probably not been a thing on my priority But as list. part of that, because you're not used... Uh, maybe the other part of it, too, is that there has to be a... Because, they, they again, they do it in other leagues around the world. And I understand it's a little bit different with their tournaments and blah, blah, blah. I guess there'd have to be some incentive for fans for you to want to, that game... For you to want to win that game. Yeah, you can't go, eh, third place, finish. What if you flip-flopped uh, where they where they drafted? The no, that doesn't that doesn't do enough. Yeah, you can pick either 29th or 28th. Mm-hmm. Or 29th or 30th. Yeah, you go 29th. Oh, we won. Would it be 28th and 27th? No. No, 29th and 30th. I'm doing my numbers wrong. Yeah, same. You just moved up a full draft spot, Kyle, by winning that game. That could be the difference between Hall of Famer and not of Famer. Uh-huh. Mm. 
Clippers trade Tobias Harris. Speaking of halls. Uh Uh-huh. You have that trade in front of you. Would you mind? I know that's on your rundown. Would you mind breaking that down? The Tobias Harris trade was as follows. Yeah, so the 76ers will receive Tobias Harris, Mm -hmm. Boban Marjanovic, Mm -hmm. and Mike Scott. He of the emoji tattoos. Yes. The Clippers will receive, in exchange, Landry Shamit, Wilson Chandler, Mike Muscala, a 2020 first-round pick, so the, the Sixers' 2020 first-round pick, and then Miami's unprotected first in 2021. Mm. They'll also receive a pair of second-rounders that Woj is reporting will be in 2021 and 2023. Okay. And those are both the Sixers' second-round picks. I want to throw something out, and then you can yell at me about it. Okay. You know, you know the guy who runs uh, the Clippers also happens to be the logo of the entire league. Right. And the best player executive of, of all, all time, time, inarguably. Inarguably. Like in any sport. In any sport. <laughs> so we're talking about Jerry West. Any chance the Clippers, who for now the second year in a row have made, remember the Clippers were the number one seed in the West not too long ago. Like they started out really strong. A lot of people didn't expect them to compete. And here we are in the middle of the season and they're purposely tanking their way out. Are we completely dismissing the idea that they might be shaping up to go after Anthony Davis? No, I think I, Anthony Davis or Kawhi Leonard or Kevin Durant or some combination. Sure. Uh, because I'm I talking believe- about right now, though. Uh, no. No. No, because the package of players and draft picks that they would put together. Okay. I, I, I did some research, a little bit of research. Okay. So before this trade, really the best L.A. could do would be like Shea Gilgis Alexander and, uh, and Tobias Harris. I think a huge key here is that the Clippers owe their own pick this year to the Celtics if it's outside the lottery. So by making this trade, if they fall out of the lottery, which that has to be part of the goal, they now retain that pick. That's a big deal. That's a first. So that's an argument against them getting Anthony Davis. Against? How so? Because the Celtics get the pick if it falls out out of the lottery. Right. So if they're in the lottery, if the Clippers are in the lottery, the Clippers keep their pick. Uh Uh-huh which means they could trade that pick. They now have that as an asset. What are we missing here? Because, but but they can't, but they can't. If the clip doesn't. Okay, so what what if they trade it and then they're outside the lottery? Mm Hmm. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying if they were to say. Yeah, I don't know how that. If they were to say, well, I would, uh, again. Don't the Celtics own the pick? If it's outside the lottery. No. They own it until the Clippers gain it back by being in the lottery. That I don't the know. The Clippers have already traded that pick to Boston. Right, but it's a conditional pick. Right, it's traded though. Sure, but here's what I don't know. I honestly don't know. They this. can't flip their own first rounder. But they couldn't. That flip, they don't have. But they can't flip their rights to that first rounder if it does in fact revert to them as part of an asset. Why would Why would the Pelicans? Why would the do Pelicans that? take that chance? So we could also be talking about this summer as well and after the fact. No, I, I literally think they have traded that pick. There are just conditions on it right. that will wear off until the Celtics eventually. So that would be something they would include this summer. If they were to make a move and they did not and they did not make the playoffs this year, therefore they were in the lottery, which yeah, means they would they be able to have that They'd be able to have that for this summer. Okay. They don't currently have their pick. Now they have Philly's 2020 protected pick, Miami's 2021 unprotected pick, which is a big deal. That was that was the prime part of that entire deal. Plus Gilgis Alexander and Landry Shamit, along with whatever else they want. So they now have a war chest they could offer that this summer could include a lottery pick in this year's draft. But even if they did this right now, they could throw in Philly's 2020, Miami's 2021. They could probably also throw in one of their own picks down the road too. So the question is, is that is a package of Shamit, Gilgis Alexander, Miami's 2021 pick, Philly's 2020 pick, and let's say the Clippers' 2021 pick, is that better than Ball, Kuzma, and the picks the Lakers are going to give up? I don't. I don't really look at the Laker picks as a big it's deal. Ball, it's 
Ball, Ball Kuzma, Kuzma, Ingram, Ingram. and uh, what's his face? The uh, L- uh, Michael Beasley. Yeah, but who's the, uh, who's, the who's the kid they're including too? Uh, the isn't there a European kid they're including in that too? The Lakers. I don't think so. Uh, Svi, what's no, was they Svi, just traded? They him. just traded Svi. Who's the other one? Zubac. Is, I thought there was another kid being traded. Okay, let's just go with Ingram Ball. Uh, yeah, oh, wait, plus, wait, Jason plus, Hart, right? Josh Hart. And Josh no, Hart. No, he wasn't included. Jason Hart, in, former king. He wasn't included, at least that I've seen, okay. in the latest in the latest deal that included the, the two first-round picks. And I don't think – and plus the Lakers would take Solomon Hill's contract. Correct, on, which the Clippers could do as well. And I'm not sure the Clippers – would do that. And an Anthony so Davis. I think right. I think the bigger deal is they are they are getting assets back and clearing cap space to go after Kawhi Leonard and or Kevin Durant and right. or Kyrie Irving. Right. I think they know they're going to be a destination, especially with Jerry West, sure. who is a genius at getting free yep. agents to sign. Played a big role in in Kevin Durant coming to Golden State. I think that's more what they're what they're aiming for. I don't I don't think they're trying to make this deal now to try and flip for Anthony Davis at the deadline. So the Clippers become a destination, but right now the thought is, and, and you have to play the games, but the thought is is that the, the Clippers have now taken themselves out of the playoffs. Long term, they, with 20, almost 30 games left, they've taken themselves out of the playoffs. Probably. Where Unless Shea Gilgis Alexander has Goes crazy. And somebody's, <laughs> yeah. So where Kings fans are buzzing is that you have – the Clippers are the only team separating right now the Kings from the playoffs in that eight seed. They're a game back of the Clippers. They're a game and a half ahead of the Lakers. So I know a lot of Kings fans, myself included, are going, we're, we're officially in a playoff race. And you can go uh, on the old Twitter machine if you want to participate in our drive question of the day, which we should probably post on the drive Facebook page at some point, too. We, we, need, to, we need to do better there. Uh, the drive question of the day, are the Kings officially in a playoff race yet? Uh, almost 800 votes, 88%. Hasn't moved much percentage-wise. 88% uh, say that we are in a playoff race. But here, here's where here's where I get really... I don't get the logic that says they're not, but keep going. The The only argument against is that the true playoff, the playoff race doesn't start until after the All-Star break, and that's when teams kick it into gear. And really, by teams we're talking about, you and I agreed that the only team that truly worries us that's behind the Kings is the Los Angeles Lakers. But here's where Kings fan in me starts popping up. And I've been pretty damned optimistic the last couple you weeks. You have been. And shockingly, the Kings have also won seven straight home games, and it's a good time right now. We could be having this conversation uh, next week, Kyle, and going, God, dang, what's going on with Jaeger and this good Bar- Marvin Bagley sucks? And, but right now it's a good time. I don't think I'll be saying Marvin Bagley sucks. Yeah, I don't think so either. <laughs> But I would ask other Kings fans out there, do you blame me? Like, I absolutely am having a really hard time buying into the Kings being in a playoff race right now. Well, it doesn't... I I think what you're conflating... Conflating? Okay. Is that the right word? Sure. Is the Kings making the playoffs versus being in a playoff race. They're just in a... They're in a playoff playoff race. race. I'm talking about making the playoffs. You're 100% correct. And... I have a hard time believing in the Kings making the playoffs. If they they are shaping up, they're in a position to be in the final week of the season yes. fighting for a playoff spot. Yeah. And that begins now because, like I sure. said, now if they lose five in a row, it's disaster. Like, every game they play now is going to matter. Every game the Lakers and the Clippers – and the Jazz, I think you said they're a game and a half back of the Jazz. Yep. Every single one of those games is going to matter to the Kings. Sure. And the Which Kings to me, have... when you start scoreboard watching, that's a big deal. Race. Yeah. The Kings also have, I believe, 14 home, 15 road games remaining. We mentioned earlier the Kings have played the fifth toughest schedule in the NBA as of right now, and that will go up tonight after they play the Rockets. 7 p.m. right here on Sports 1140 KHDK. Kyle. But here's the thing, and I think the fan base, even if they don't want to hear it, will understand where I'm coming from. And and no, this isn't the Kings are going to lose by 40 shtick because I'm trying to reverse jinx. This is a legit thing. I have a real difficult time. If if this comes down to realistically, 
it seems that it has come down to a race between the Sacramento Kings and the Los Angeles Lakers for entry into the playoffs. Mm -hmm. First off, I have a hard time believing when it matters we're going to beat the Lakers at all for anything because that just doesn't happen. Somehow, some way, they always find some stupid way to either cheat, steal, uh, have referees that later on get indicted. Whatever the case is, we all know that history. So there's the that thought process. But in reality, even if it wasn't the Lakers, I have a real hard time, despite the fact they lost by 46 last night to a Victor Oladipo-less Indiana Pacers team in Indiana, I have a hard time believing that LeBron James is going to miss the playoffs. Counterpoint. Sure. They lost by 46. They, they <laughs> sure Victor. did. This 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 scenario that the Lakers find themselves in, is yeah, LeBron James missing the playoffs is weird, but he's also now in the West, and he's also now on a team that he's completely alienated everybody. We saw the pictures yesterday, one of which he was uh, way down on the bench. There were three open spots, and then the rest of the team was all sitting yeah. together. We saw a side photo. Somebody, uh, it was Dan Dakin, somebody just posted uh, that I saw, uh, it was a side view. It was during a timeout. LeBron was in the same seat, and the rest of the team was gathered around. There's obviously massive issues in Los Angeles. Yeah, and there was a report of a big locker room issue as well that almost got physical. Yeah, and then and then what was it? Luke Walton passed out <clears throat> brownies afterwards. <clears throat> you, you, <laughs> brownies. Yeah, that hopefully his dad didn't make. <laughs> I was gonna say i hope his dad did make right it. shockingly everybody seemed to be very calm and friendly a few <laughs> that hours was lebron's after. that was lebron's problem at the end of the bench the other night you've got lavar ball making noise i mean this is a great time right now for laker haters lavar ball making noise he went on phoenix radio yesterday talking about what the lakers did to his son the lakers gave my boy that losing attitude if you look at my boys one thing they do do is win do, do, do. being undefeated jello and mellow winning 60 games in a row i mean my boys don't lose too much but when it got to the Lakers, they got that Luke Walton was the worst coach ever for Lonzo because he had a losing mentality. Mm. LeVar Ball also was asked if he was afraid of LeBron. Were you a little afraid of LeBron, like the reaction I'm LeBron would have? LeBron. I'm not afraid of Jesus. What are you talking about? Well, I'm I... telling you this right here. Everybody's saying you're not hearing nothing from me. But listen, if I'm over in Europe, you guys can't even get over there. You know, I don't need to hear the rest of that. Kyle, here's some other highlights. If I'm over in Europe, you guys can't even get over there. Yeah, you can't. There literally is no way yeah, to fly no, over there. Can't do it. Uh, here's LeVar on Luke Walton. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here's LeVar on Luke Walton. Luke Walton was the worst coach ever for Lonzo because he had a losing mentality. He's been losing for three years. Well, so that's that... what you develop losing. Okay. Luke Walton. Loser mentality. How about Kyle Kuzma? You don't even hear of Kuzma if Lonzo don't make him in the Las Vegas Summer League. You, you see every time Kuzma play by himself, yeah. Kevin Hart play by himself, they don't get nothing. Ingram play by himself, they don't Hart? get nothing. They look raggedy. You put Lonzo in the mix, now everybody 30, 40 point scores and doing this and that. I don't think that's true, but I'm really <laughs> focused on the fact that he just called Josh Hart Kevin Hart. I think he did. Very funny. So he's getting loose. LeBron's not sitting with his teammates. Things are getting – like, it's about as bad as it can possibly be in Los Angeles. But do you truly think – If this was – okay, let yeah. me – okay, let's take – everything is exactly the same. LeBron James is on the team. Sure. And this is the Memphis Grizzlies. Uh-huh. I think you would be like, oh, yeah, they're done. Like, look at them. Yes! Of course <laughs> I would. Oh, okay. Well, maybe not with LeBron. Maybe not with LeBron. Okay, that that's the one caveat. No, it, it, you're talking about guys made eight straight finals. Yeah, in the East. In the East, totally understandable. But but st now, if they decide for some reason, like, oh, it, here's what I could see legitimately: they don't get Anthony Davis. Uh huh. They don't get Anthony Davis. Mm -hmm. The smart move at that point, you could very easily argue, would be trade LeBron. No, but. Oh. LeBron's groin is still bothering him. He tried to play through it. Hurt. Uh, LeBron's going to miss the rest of the season. Yeah. Why put Miles on a 34-year-old guy when you need him next year? You need him out there recruiting this summer. Let him get started. The one thing LeBron can do that other teams can't, he can tamper. LeBron yep. can tamper all he He's wants. He's allowed to have friends. And by the way, yeah, his best friend happens to be the agent for the biggest prize on the market. 
So let LeBron do his thing. Stage is already set for Kyrie Irving to come over if that if they want that to happen. Let's say LeBron goes into the offseason. Next year they come back with Kyrie Irving, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis, and who cares as the rest of the team? Yeah. What's the point of putting miles on LeBron James this year? So what? So he can get he can get destroyed in the first round by the Warriors or the Nuggets? Now I could see that. And if That'd that awesome. That would be amazing. <laughs> Now, if that happens, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna call off the dogs on this. But with LeBron James playing, you you can't see a situation where we look up in a few weeks and the Lakers have won 11 of 14. LeBron James is going crazy. Uh, they've had an all. Oh, LeBron's all, already going crazy. An all on on the floor. Uh, they've had an all players closed door meeting and everything got worked out. Hmm. Haven't we fallen for this though before with teams, Kyle, where we think they're done at the All Star break? Doesn't with that Le- stretch with LeBron to su- teams? Doesn't that stretch? We- but these are LeBron teams that were like, oh hey, they're only the three seed this year. Maybe they're maybe we're- they're done. This isn't a LeBron team where he everybody is about to be traded. They are in the tenth seed right now, going into the All Star break. Like this is very different. And maybe I'll be sitting here in three months going, wow, I can't believe I bet against LeBron. Look, they're in the finals. Who did that? Like- <laughs> I don't think, I, I think because of the West, I can't do the whole finals thing. But I can tell you right now, if the, if the Los Angeles Lakers were the Eastern Conference, I'd probably be sitting here telling you, yeah, I, I could see the yeah, Lakers in the finals. Because at the rate the East goes, I think the Lakers right now are a six seed in the East. How many times, whether it's the Patriots in football, whether it's LeBron's Cavs last year, we have had this conversation every year around the middle of the year All-Star break yeah, where we think just, they're done. Yeah, but but done as in like, man, they may not make it to the finals. Not done like this. This is very this is different, dude. This is weird. So we're saying what's happening is weird. So we're saying I, I agree with you. Do you know you. how weird it is? You opened the show. We opened the show talking about how much of a disaster the Lakers are. Yeah. We talked about sports in the first That segment. is kind of weird. That doesn't happen. No. this If this was a normal just like, man, they're really struggling. They were the four seed until they lost eight of their last ten. What's up with that defense? <laughs> I've just been hurt too many times by the Lakers, Kyle. Okay. I no, totally care. understood. I Every haven't. time. So, so in my mind, I'm, I'm looking ahead as we break. I want to enjoy the year, Kyle. I really, really do. But I'm looking ahead at the way the Kings finish. They finish in Portland Mm -hmm. on Wednesday, April 10th. Portland trash. (laughs) I look at the Kings in Portland, April 10th. And then one last thing here. I look at the Lakers finishing up their season. Loading, loading, loading. Oh, God, I didn't even look at this in advance. I didn't even look at this in advance, dude. Okay. You know who the Lakers finish up their season against? Portland. The day before. Ooh. At home. We'll see. Portland's going to screw us, and we're going to finish one game out. We missed the break? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, well, it was important. We'll take a break. No, it was in Portland. When we come back. We'll get to uh, we'll get to more on this Kings more on. Rockets tonight. We will preview that. And Kobe Bryant has pissed off James Harden just in time to play the Kings. We're also going to talk about this mountain lion. And we got to talk about a mountain lion and a man fighting because this was the matchup of the evening on Monday night. Sports 1140 KCK.